Good morning, Athens, and welcome to Education Matters, the official voice of you. Education Matters is sponsored by the Clark County School District. Better together, the Clark County School District, and your local internet station, Me Radio Athens. Check it out at MeRadioAthens.com. My name is Rodrigo Green, and joining me is my, are my co-hosts, Fallon Green, Samaya Stone, Kyson Vaughn, and our returning guest, I mean, returning co-host, Joshua Henderson. Now, on today on Education Matters, we'll be discussing the ongoing issues and the aftermath of the Roe v. Wade overturning with ourselves. But before we start today's show, <coughs> I will give us our words to grow on. You can't depend on your eyes when your imagination is out of focus, from Mark Twain. Today on Education Matters, we'll be discussing the ongoing issues surrounding Roe v. Wade and its overturning with ourselves. Now, as you all know, Roe v. Wade had just recently been overturned, declaring that it is no longer a constitutional right for females to be, get, to be uh, allowed an abortion. Now, in the first segment of Education Matters, we'll be, we will be playing audio from a, uh, a previous show with attorney Ken Dias, where he was talking about what his thoughts on are on Roe v. Wade surrounding his expertise. The uh, recent leaked opinion from the Supreme Court about their potential overturning of Roe v. Wade. The first question I want to ask for you about this is, you know, with a lawyer with your experience, have you dealt with any cases dealing with, you know, what Roe v. Wade is dealing with, like what it, what it concerns itself with? You know, as I tell young people, when you go to school, the school system that you're in, when you don't read and learn how to think for yourself, the only education you get is to teach you how to read between the lines. It does not teach you how to think outside the box. See, Roe v. Wade stood for 50 years. Is that am I correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. It was not a problem for 50 years. That's because you only had two groups in this country, black and white. See? And so... <clears throat> When abortions occur, whites still was maintain a majority in this country. They still maintain their 87 or 87 percent majority in this country. And so it was fine. Then all of a sudden, in the last 25 years, the population started shifting. Okay? So the population started shifting when more Hispanics start coming to the country, more Asian, so forever. But as long as there's two of us, black and white, you know, we only 12%, so it didn't matter. They were not losing population. Okay? Now, so they, they saw this coming. Remember, you know, in this country, you have 10 white think tanks. We only have one. So they, see, when you, Roe v. Wade is going along, they are losing a million people a year through abortion. And so their population is decreasing. So what's your opinion, though? Roe v. Wade is not based on some angelical right, somebody wrong, and whatever. It's based on numbers. And, read the, and you've seen in Charlotte Bills that said, we shall not be replaced. You just saw what happened in New York, but up in Buffalo. White males have gotten afraid that the population is going to shift and they would no longer be in the majority. That's a hot take right there, Attorney Dias. How do you... That didn't just get started. See? And they have set it up over the years to put their justice on the, on the Supreme Court and say, you need white women, you need to have these babies. It didn't hurt the country because the country decreased the population anyway. But in order for them to keep the, keep the majority, they need these babies. See, the only percentage that you were for boy didn't matter because you you only twelve percent of the population. So that's what this is all about. How can you say you know I got this big angelical Christian worry about all this the way he treats me? Mm. Oh, big time Christian, you you're a big time Christian, but you treat me this way. You don't you don't practice one side of Christianity here. It's not about that. So you have to be a deep thinker. That's the reason education matters. So, if you don't get educated to read between the lines, 
then you haven't got educated. So you're telling me that the reason that people are so inked up about this is because they don't want to be in the minority. They don't want their population to decrease just like we are. They set it up for years so they could get Roe v. Wade overturned. Mm. What you thought it was about? But, but what about the, you know, Clarence Thomas? He's a fellow black guy, a uh, black man just like us on the Supreme Court. You know, Clarence Thomas about my age. I remember when Clarence Thomas used to, used to clerk for Bobby Hill. But Clarence Thomas, now he couldn't even one or two years different. Bobby Hill was an attorney from Athens that went to Savannah State and Harvard Law School. Clarence Thomas used to clerk for him in Savannah. So I have met Clarence Thomas, you know. Oh, you have? Yeah. Uh, so folks used to. Maybe I've been in law school, I was in law school, you know. Uh, so, you know, Clarence Thomas is, if you don't shake the leaf off the tree, then you get the supposed to favor treatment, you see? Wow. So, what do you think this says about, you know, if, if, this, if this law, you know, gets overturned, what do you think this says about the United States from, you know, an outsider's perspective? Well, you know, it may be, it may have come at the best time. Let me, let me say this for you about the population. Mm -hmm. This is my prediction. In three years, you will have three million Ukrainians in this country. I didn't say five, 20 years, in three years. Why, do you, why so exact? They need population increase. Mm. See, and then you just set up the court. Then if I want to come in from... Hey, I can't get in because the court said, you know, blah, whatever reason they're going to use. But they're going to take, the, you, you will have, I, I tell all black people got a job, but I hold it to you, have three million Ukrainians in this country, increase the white population. Mm. Come on, teach. See? And, and all them help on the side will disappear. Do you, uh, do so you think that this, you know, Roe v. Wade getting overturned could open doors to more laws like that give us fundamental rights to ourselves, you know, like the right to vote for black men, I black do. men and women getting I, abolished and all that? They have, because uh, Clarence Thomas, man, I'll tell you something about Clarence Thomas. You know, we had the Voting Rights Act, he's, the, the, the case of the Voting Rights Act. Clarence Thomas took every game in the 60s and 70s that we made in regard to civil rights legislation, and he overturned every one of them. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was in a Miller case over the University of Georgia, when they had filed to end the affirmative action program for the University of Georgia. And, a, and, and we were winning those cases. And in the middle of the last case, Clarence Thomas wrote a decision called the Sage, and the University of Georgia affirmative action program went down. Clarence Thomas wrote that decision. It wasn't on the university case, but it was a case coming out of the Supreme Court that could use for precedence. Now, why do you think Clarence Thomas would do something like that? Well, here's what you have to understand about Clarence Thomas was raised in the Catholic school. I'm old man, just tell you what the truth is. <clears throat> when you take blacks that are raised basically by whites, all the benefits they ever got in their life about, uh, from whites, that's where the mindset set is. See? So you believe that, and this, this might sound offensive, you think that Clarence Thomas is whitewashed? Brainwashed. Mm -hmm. Brainwashed is the word. We all got brainwashed. <coughs> in the whole education system, we got brainwashed. I just tell people, when I was a young boy, I used to go to the movie and watch Tarzan. I don't know if you want to think about Tarzan. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and then I was now sitting in the movie, the young boy put it for Tarzan because all the black people over there in Africa. And they should apologize for me for brainwashing me like that. <laughs> they should. And then here I am sitting, I, I tell you how bad a brainwash me. Well, you got 200 black men on a plantation and a black guy at the book and pole. 200 black men and five black men that whooping it. You got 200 black men watching it? Mm. You're brainwashed. Come on, teach. Come on, You're teach. You're brainwashed. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? You're brainwashed. So, you talked a lot about the reasoning behind why, you know, they're trying to prevent, you know, they're trying to get rid of Roe v. Wade. But what about the effect it'll have on minorities? You know, because a lot of people are saying that this is aiming, they're aiming this at us because we are on the we're on the high list. We're, we're high on the list. Well, they make these lists mm -hmm. about, you know, numbers saying we're high on the list for abortions, you know, every, for every, and, and, and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong about this. I saw on a statistics from the American Health Association, for every 1,000 black women that get pregnant, mm -hmm. 27 of them 
of them get an abortion. That's more than 18 Hispanic women, and that's more than 10 white women. I don't think that's right, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's, that is correct. You don't think so? so? Then what do you think effect? What effect do you think this will have on minorities? It's going to have an effect on minorities because uh, the uh, you know young lady gets most of the abortion. She got to travel. I mean, you know, Roe v. Wade is is crazy to overturn. I mean, in today's world, if I want an abortion, I got to just get you know get on a plane and go to California. Mm. I mean, what what are you overturning here now? But that's for the people that are able to do that, though. Then if I can get to California, we'll go to California. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, what about the people that are struggling to even pay for, you know, menial things like the house and, you know, taxes and all that? Mm-hmm. They can't afford a plane ticket to California to go get an abortion. And then what about the people, you know, that uh, suffer from sexual assault, you know, mm-hmm. rape? Those people, mm-hmm. they oh. need that abortion because, you know, they feel like they've been vi- their body's been violated. I'm a- I, oh, I would agree with you that, that that's going to hurt cool people. I agree with you on that. Uh, so, folks, but I don't think our abortion rate is higher than that of white. Mm, come on. Come on, I, I don't believe that. <laughs> I do not believe that. But of course, it's going to hurt us. Yes, it's going to hurt us. Uh, the simple way you want to take care of that problem, just start a go, go fund me fund or whatever and go to California, wherever you want to be. You know, that, that, could, that could solve that problem. But, it all, but the biggest thing about it, they want to overturn some other things also. And Roe v. Wade could be present for them overturning some other cases also, see. Mm. Uh, so it's a, it's a going that way. Because what some people want in this country is a race war. See? Mm. Come on, T. Mr. Don't you think for them what they had the capital years ago? They were hoping <coughs> that it's going to turn into a race war. They want to take, the back over, take this country back over by force. <coughs> mm. So you okay? Another top, another question I like to ask. You, you say you want to take they, they you say they want to take the country back by force. Mm-hmm. Would you say that this is also you know a bully tactic, mainly from the Republicans? A power play. A power play. No, of a sorts? power play. It's a power play. Yeah. I mean, these things are already planned and thought out. See, while you sleep and they think them, they they don't think things to think them out. See, mm. they already think them out, but the, but they you know they got ten year plan. How do you think they got the court? It took them 10 years, but they got the court. Trump appointed two Supreme Court justices, and Obama, in his last term, they wouldn't let him appoint one. All that's power play. Uh, uh, they used the code word, but that's power play. Thank you, and we'll be right back after these messages. Oh, that's a good question. That's a great question. Oh, that's, that's a good one. Excellent question. That's a great question. You are listening to Education Matters, where great questions get asked and answered. Welcome back to Education Matters. You're still here with Samaya Stone. Fadrell Green. Alan Green. And our returning co-hosts. Tyson Vaughn. And Joshua Henderson. And in the last segment, we did a little bit of a blast from the past to look back on a Roe vs. Wade show. And now, in this segment, we're going to go around the table and have our, I guess, give our opinions on how we feel about the recent decision made by the Supreme Court. But before we jump <laughs> in all the way into our segment, we are going to have the word of the week by me. The word of the week for this week is kindle, which means to light or set on fire. It used in a sentence is the young man kindled at once. And that has been your word of the week for this week. And we will now have Fallon Green with our history fact. 1844, the founder of the Mormons, uh, Joseph uh, Smith Jr., was murdered by a mob at uh, Carthage, uh, Illinois jail. Smith's brother, Hiram, was also killed. Joseph w- uh, was running for president at the time and is therefore the first U.S. presidential candidate to be assassinated. This has been your History Facts, sponsored by me, you, Radio Athens. Okay, so we're going to jump into our segment by going around the table and talking about how we feel about the recent decision on the Roe v. Wade case made by the Supreme Court. And I'm going to start first because, you know, I am the the lady out of our group of young gentlemen today. Um, honestly, if we're being a thousand percent honest, I'm really upset about the Roe versus Wade decision because I just feel like <clears throat> men have more say so in the decision than women do. Like they've had a lot more say so about this situation from the jump, and I just feel like they don't 
think about it. They don't they don't really have a reason to be like empathetic or sympathetic or put themselves in somebody else's shoes in this sense because that's never been something they had to worry about. So it's like if I don't have to empathize or this is not something that's gonna happen to me, you know, I can go around impregnating people and have a bunch of kids that I don't have to take care of because I know they can't get an abortion, you know. I don't have anything to worry about. So it just upsets me because it's like you never know what the situation is and why somebody's getting an abortion. So just simply stripping that fact and that resource away from everybody just gives you it just it does more hurt than it does help. Cause like when you talked about in the um the segment that we used as our our look back, you talked about sexually assaulted victims, raped victims, all kinds of things. And just imagine some of those victims do get impregnated and they do want to have abortions because they've been taken advantage of. Now that we've got this overturned rule, it's like, what do you say to these victims now other than you just have to live with that? Hmm. Like, I just feel like that's not fair. That's not right. It's like it's all kinds of messed up in a sense. It's like, you know, we're letting nine people, nine old people, like they're not even letting like younger people, like the future tell us and make decisions it's nine elder supreme court justices telling us what to do and what not to do and what rules we can and can do it's like the people that have are on the supreme court justice have lived their lives and it's roe v wade stood with those same supreme court justices i'm pretty sure just about because you know you can run as many times as you would like it stood 50 years without it being a problem all of a sudden it's a problem now And you also brought up a bully tactic, and I do feel like that's a bully tactic because statistics show that black women, I don't have the exact percentages, I have to go back and look, have way more abortions than any other race I think it is. So I feel like it was like a bully tactic in sort of like a race war in a way. I just feel like it's all kind of targeted. If it's not targeting people of color or black women, it's targeting women, period, because it's like they're just stripping away rights that women should be able to have. Um, I definitely agree with you, and I think that it's just all in all, overall, totally ludicrous to take away a constitutional right from women in general. Like, the whole idea of that just rubs me the wrong way, 100%. Um, especially when there are so many bad or inconvenient circumstances to be considered within that type of law. I just feel like it's crazy to think. And then the fact that things like that are just left up to the Supreme Court, like they didn't come back out for a vote or anything like that, and they can just review and overturn constitutional rights. That that whole concept just rubs me the wrong way. Piggybacking off of that. it Piggybacking off of that, only reason I say that is because I wholeheartedly agree. That rubs me the wrong way because it's like, okay, we have nine people sitting up here in the office and we got seven billion, maybe eight billion people that live on the earth. So it's like, we I don't know the population of the United States. My bad, y'all. But it's like we have all these people and we have the Supreme Court justice of nine, nine people compared to the millions of people that we have and we're going to let the nine people have a say. So we're not even going to include the rest of the people. That and, should be able to have that kind of opinion. And to be factual, those with those nine people, there are seven males in the Supreme Court. And, exactly. And there are only two. There are only two women on the Supreme Court. And I think the two the two women are the only one that was voting against the overturn. I think it was two the two women and one male Supreme Court justice that voted to keep Roe versus Wade and keep legalized abortions out of that whole Supreme Court justice sitting. And I just want to say, you know, to all you younger viewers, listeners out there, to take this as an inspiration to you to know, you know, to like look more into your history books and stuff, you know, and t- pay more attention to social studies, cl- your social studies classes, because it's a high misconception that, you know, people believe that the president has all the power. I want you to take this as, you know, a learning <laughs> lesson to better understand your government, to better understand how legislation works. And I also want to, you know, and it also goes back to what Ken Dias said, Attorney Ken Dias said, you know, schools nowadays, they teach you to read between the lines. 
I hope that you take from what we are teaching, from what not what we're teaching, because you know we're too well, we're too young to be teaching any of you. We're just we're we're no old, younger than we're no older than any of y'all, young reviewers. But I just want to say I want you to take this 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 experience, what just happened, as you know a learning lesson that things are not as they seem. You don't just take what somebody else said for granted. Do your own research so that you can be the change and that you can be the power that, you know, holds those people at bay that want to force their own opinions into law like what they did with Roe v. Wade. Another thing I want to get into was the fact that uh, what Ken Dias had said about the population increase. He mentioned that uh, he mentioned a, he mentioned heavily that uh, Roe v. Wade was a long-term plan by Congress and by the powers that be to increase the Caucasian numbers by taking away the constitutional right to abortion. And keep in mind, this doesn't mean that you can't get an abortion. It just means now that you know the state, you know people, in, people and uh, politicians, they now decide whether or not you get to have an abortion or not. So it all really depends on who, who, your, uh, who your governor is, what state you're living in. And unfortunately, here for us Georgians, uh, since we're a red state, and Brian Kemp had already passed a law stating that uh, abortion will you know, be reprimand, repre reprimanded from, uh, from us, that is the case here. But I want to get your thoughts, um, all of you, about what you think about what Ken Dias said about this being a numbers game, about the fact that this is all planned just to, you know, get the, the numbers for Caucasians up. What do you what are your opinions on that? I think that that's I think that that's kind of a deep conspiracy right now, because I remember when we were doing shows during COVID and there were people suggesting that the government was regulating COVID to control um, population and just the fact that those like that the number of population and how much control the government can have over it just just causes you to wonder because it is the government after all they do control a whole lot and it could very well be possible um I totally agree with what Josh said and the number thing like I was thinking about it while you were talking 50 years, Roe v. Wade, Roe v. Wade withheld and stood for 50 years. If you think about it, 50 years is not that long. Exactly. 50 years is not a long time at all. So, like, with the deep conspiracy, yeah. Because you can you can look at what we have right now and see that more so, like, the white and Caucasian race is kind of getting wiped out more and more as, like, time goes on out of the minority. So, it's like... Our minority is getting, it's becoming more people of color. And I think within that deep conspiracy, most people think that that's not what the government wants. But don't you find it a little, and I'm not trying to turn this into like info wars or anything, but don't you find it a little odd that this, out of all the laws that, you know, got passed, that this was, you know, leaked so easily into the media and we were able to find out about this tech? technically find out about this was going to happen before it even happened? Well, I think that that's all in design. Like, they want us to know that it's coming. It's like, yeah, we're going to go ahead and give you a sneak peek. Like, this is what this is what we've been thinking about. This is what we have on or our not mind. even that. I, I also think that because this was leaked and became national attention so early that there's something else that's about to kind of rock our country. But it's, we're not really going to notice it as broadly as we noticed this and I feel like that's why they gave us the opportunity to notice this as broad. Thank you and we'll be right back after these messages. Oh, that's a good question. That's a great question. Oh, that's, that's a good one. Excellent question. That's a great question. You are listening to Education Matters where great questions get asked and answered. Welcome back to Education Matters, the official voice of the youth. My name is Jadrell Green and joining me are my co-hosts Fallon Green. Samaya Stone. Joshua Henderson. Tyson Vaughn. Today, uh, today on Education Matters, we will be continuing our discussion about Roe v. Wade. But before we continue, we will have F Fallon Green with our health fact. 
our muscle strength can be measured in different ways. If you're referring to the muscle that can exert the most force, then your calf muscle, the cellulose, would be the winner. However, if you want to find the muscle that can exert the most pressure, then the jaw muscle, or the master, would be the strongest. The human jaw can close teeth with a force as great as 200 pounds, or 890 newtons. This is your uh, health fact, sponsored by Drug Free Athens. Thank you, Fallon. Now, we'll, for this next segment, I want to get into, um, now that Roe v. Wade has been overturned, Let's talk more about what some other landmark, like what other landmark laws in history could be overturned from you know just this being ha- just from this happening. So another what, what Samaya, what you had brought up um, during the break was a tweet about Plessy v. Ferguson. I did. Um, okay, so actually, Barack Obama had made a tweet on Twitter, and I have it pulled up, so I'm gonna read it. It says, today the Supreme Court not only reversed nearly 50 years of precedent, it regulated the most intensely personal decisions someone could make to the whims of politicians and I- idea leagues attacking the essential freedoms of millions of Americans. So our senator, his name is John, I think you pronounce his name, Corn Cornian. I'm not sure. This is a current name. senator, by the way. Yes. He continues, this is all on Twitter. I don't know why people in our government think Twitter is just the safest place to go. It's not really. It, it's not. He continued to retweet and say, now do Plessy versus Ferguson or Brown versus Board of Education. So for the people that don't know, Plessy versus Ferguson happened between April 13th, 1896 and May 18th, 1896. And it was a landmark decision of the United States Supreme Court, which ruled that racial seg- segregation laws did not violate the U.S. Constitution, as long as the facilities for each race were equal in quality. So, a U.S. This, senator, yeah, said that. I want yeah. you now, listeners. Do you understand how dangerous you know that sounds coming from a man's mouth like that? A man in his power. Yeah, because it wasn't just a random guy on Twitter. No, nah, yeah, it's definitely our senators. This is somebody who we depend on to make to make rules and decisions within our government on a daily basis. And and and, and this is coming from someone who has experience as someone as someone who's been on the, been on social media before. That's not a good sign. Right, like we have people, we got people that run our country that we supposed to put our faith in. Saying things like that, like Plessy versus Ferguson is legalized segregation. Like, that's the separate but equal. And then Brown versus Board of Education is the integration of schools. Has he released a statement since then? I don't, I'm not sure. I'm actually going to look, I'm going to continue to look. But I know uh, after this tweet, somebody else said, Senator Cornyn says out loud what other Republicans whisper to each other. The GOP wants to overturn Brown versus Board of Education and resert the 1800s doctrine of separate but equal to reestablish racial segregation laws that inher- inherently amplify blacks are inferior. Another thing that um, that's similar to that, Clarence Thomas, I don't know if y'all, list, if, if y'all heard about this, but Clarence Thomas also mentioned after overturning Roe v. Wade that he wanted to look into overturning the same-sex marriage law and the uh, laws around s- surrounding uh, contraceptions, too. See, these are that's what's scaring me, because these are becoming things that seem like blatant, like not even blatant attacks just racially, but blatant attacks against humanity. Like, that's almost dehumanizing de-hum- people. That is something I can also agree with, agree with, on, you, agree with on you there. Like, but, like, something like this, like this... It's such dehumanization all around, all around. Like, how are we any better? Are we any better than like our like the people who we count on? Yeah. And if this and if this is and if this actually gets like passed on, this just makes it even worse. Yeah, it makes you question who's really like in charge. Yeah. And I think something else that's gonna come into question is how do, because I think a lot of people are gonna take deeper deeper dives into how government officials are put in place because if you if you look at it the higher it gets it seems like you start to get the same people running against nobody every time they run for office it brings in like you know the questions of whether or not we really are a democracy and whether or not 
we are like the standard in terms of a country trying to develop itself. From yeah. from all this stuff that I'm hearing from Clarence Thomas and uh, Senator, what's what was his name again? Cornyn. Corn, Cornyn. I think Cornyn. Yeah, we're Senator say Cornyn, Cornyn trying to push us back instead of trying to progress forward. I mean, it makes it makes it sound like it. It makes us sound like we're 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 everything all the other countries say we are. Yeah. Dumb, ignorant Americans trying to get our way. Yeah, yeah, it's like as the time goes on, and it's not everybody. That's the problem. It's not even everyone. It's like the people who are running, like the people who are in charge are the dumb, ignorant, ignorant Americans that represent for us. And it's they, like once we take one step forward, like Roe v. Wade back then was our one step forward. Now that it's over its turn, we're taking a thousand steps back. And with those tweets and the people that are running our country just saying things that they're saying, it's like we're going to keep moving a thousand steps back and going back to where we started from. Even with the dehumanization and everything, it's like we're going to start back from square one. And also something that I like, if you look at the way that our government seems to be paying attention to things, also put in perspective that the government, you can only really see what's going on in the government that they let you see. Right. Even when you when it seems like you're seeing something that's not meant to see, you still can only really see what they allow you to see. And within that, it just seems odd that we can see them reviewing this and overturning things like that or mentioning things like Plessy versus Ferguson. But we've had a series of mass shootings, and they're not reviewing or overturning gun laws. I have something to say about that, actually. I seen it was a protest. I seen a protest poster, and it really made it really got me thinking. Is it, it said something? It was like we live in America, where like abortions in like a woman's body is more controlled than guns are. <laughs> it's like you're more worried about somebody having an abortion. Because you don't even have to know the backstory. Like, if somebody comes to you, a woman at that, comes to you and tells you that she wants an abortion, then you should be able to do it. You let people, 17-year-olds, grown people, walk into schools, arms, kill a bunch of people, kill a bunch of kids, go to grocery stores, go on mass shootings. Like and the wild, wild west. Yeah, they, they just, just get yeah. to walk around doing whatever they want to do and shoot everything up and everything's okay. But yeah. as soon as a woman wants an abortion, yeah. oh, Oh, no, 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 we can't do that. It's just like they're just getting nostalgic about the wrong thing. Like, and then, Yeah, and then it's like, oh, but, you know, let the life, you know, you got a pro-life, this, this, that, you know, don't kill the kids, this, whatever. What do you think mass shootings are doing? Mass shootings are killing people. Man, I... We're mass to shootings. To even hop into that, I just don't understand how pro-lifers are all about preventing abortions and not about saving lives and mass shootings. Like, which one is really pro-life? I mean, they like to make that excuse that guns save lives and put in the right hands, it can do that. I mean, do you think you you are the right hands to handle a woman's body? Right. How can you... Right. No, how can you say... No, how can you say that guns put in the right hands... The same people that say, the, say this, guns put in the right hands are good for use. But... You you have the gall to say that uh what you to declare declare to yourself that you are the right hands to handle a a female's body, seven males and two females. Those seven ma- I, those seven males. Let's face it, they basically run the Supreme Court. Literally, the others they're just following behind. It's majority rule. They like- they believe that they have power over women the same way they have power over an object. And mm-hmm. what what. What's also scary is how many like high ranking government officials I don't have it I wish I had it in my notes, but I forgot the notes. And it's just a whole bunch of high ranking officials who just spoke on abortions as if it was just like a, a, a I don't know how to explain it, but they just dismissed it as if it wasn't an issue to people or things like that. I, I gotta I gotta Yeah, they it. think piggybacking off of that, why you look why you look that up, I'm gonna say this. Back to the mass shootings and abortion kind of like, you know how people are like, pro-life. Oh, let the kid live. You know, you're killing innocent children. Blah, blah, blah. You know, going on their rant. Pro-life, pro-life, whatever. Mass shootings. You walk around and you rather somebody walk around and shoot up a store, a school, a parade, a church, whatever the case may be. For people who have made it in, in the world, 
lived on Earth, you know, went through many experiences before they kill an embryo or a fetus that hasn't even fully developed yet. That doesn't make any sense to me. It just goes back in the saying, what Ken Dyer said, you know, school, it's like, it's like, it's why education matters because you got to teach yourself to not just read between the lines. And I don't know if it's ignorance or if it's there, some, some twisted form of intelligence to their eyes, but it's almost like they don't, like they have the, it's like they do not possess the natural, abil humane ability to put themselves in another person's shoes. Do they not understand that if you take, by taking away this constitutional right, you're, you're guaranteeing, you're, you're, you're signing the death warrant of potentially millions of females across this entire nation? I mean, you're basically carrying out death sentences just to prove a point, just to, to have your way. And then it doesn't make it any better because guess what? Just because you make abortions illegal. Okay, cool. Now people are going to try to, now people, women, are going to try to find ways to get abortions and, and let's on not, their own. And let's not talk about the financial disaster we're going to be heading into with this. You know how many women are going to be spending so much money trying to go from here to here across right, the nation to get, to get abortions? To, right. We're already going through an inflation. Allowed, right. And also, this is going to drive unemployment because those people that worked at those abortion clinics are going to be out of a job for a while. Because, <sighs> yeah, like plane tickets, inflation, all of that especially if abortions are like hardcore banned illegal all in your state. Do you know how much it costs to fly from here to here to there to there to stay, get an abortion? Like abortions aren't free, I don't think. So abortions aren't free. They're you got to pay. Free. Abortions aren't free. You got to pay to get to and from wherever you got to get to. You got to pay to stay somewhere. You got to pay to get the abortion. It's like you have you have to spend money. And they're not going to and it, as much as I, it pains me to say this, they're not gonna. That's not gonna be the first option for them. For a lot of people, you know, it's gonna go back to the times where they were going in those back alleys, getting those illegal abortions, and all that and such. But we'll continue into that in the next segment after these messages. Oh, that's a good question. That's a great question. Oh, that's that's a good one. Excellent question. That's a great question. You are listening to Education Matters, where great questions get asked and answered. Welcome back to Education Matters. You're still here with Samaya Stone. For Drow Green. And Joshua Henderson. And we are still talking about the Roe versus Wade case and different things such as how we feel, solutions, and things that we feel like will happen in the future with this case. But this is our last segment. And before we jump into a completely different kind of spinoff, we want to let Fadrell finish what he was saying and finish off what he was talking about in the last segment. Thank you, Samaya. Now, what I was saying before was how... Because of this, you know, women are going to be delving more and more into the option of practicing illegal abortion or going into illegal abortions because it's an easier option than going, you know, halfway across the country to get legal abortion. And it's, it's a lot more dangerous and it, it leads a lot more into death than the other. But at, in, at this scenario, they really don't have much of a choice for the matter depending on their circumstance yeah because rather they overturning it or not there's still going to be women who don't want to carry out their pregnancies and i feel like they're putting a large amount of the population in immediate danger because of that yeah i feel like that too because like you said not everybody even if it's not like sexual assault or like rape or anything but you never know like like we were talking about earlier you never really know why someone wants an abortion yeah because but, it could be something as simple as the person just doesn't have the resources to bring a life right, into the yeah. world and that's a lot of reasons why people don't have kids now it's like they people like oh i want kids i want kids but i know that i don't have the resources or i'm not fin financially stable for a child so i don't you know i don't need to do that until i get myself all the way together to where i can have a child so legal, making abortions illegal, I'm sorry, is making it a thousand times harder. Because just imagine how many kids, even if they like, you know, if abortions aren't <coughs> successful, just imagine how many kids are going to end up in foster care or like abandoned. 
and the people that are forced to have children, um, they can easily be driven into poverty. Right. Because if you weren't sta- if you were pay- paycheck to paycheck or only making enough to support for you, then having a child and having to go to doctor's appointments and having to uh, buy child care or daycare so you can work, the things like that can drive people into poverty. Like, people do not know that, like, kids are expensive, and it's not like you could just have a baby and get rid of the baby. So I think abortion is, like you said, if you're bouncing and living paycheck to paycheck, that's what happens. Like, a lot of parents, people, especially, like, people struggling, they'll give their kids up because they know, that, like, you know, I can't do this. Like, I'm not financially stable. I'm not mentally and physically stable to be trying to raise myself, continue to raise myself and keep myself on my feet and raise a child. And also, one thing that I think needs to be looked into is now that it's left up to the states, um, abortion is still going to be legal to a certain extent under, like, extreme circumstances. That's what it says. And I I don't know if it's been clarified, but I think that it should be clarified what those circumstances are because I'm pretty sure there's going to be some that are pretty common and can't happen that are going to be left off. Another topic I want to get into with uh, you in particular, Josh, before the show began, you mentioned about, you were mentioning how too many people, and, and this goes back to what I was saying in the, be- in the beginning of the second segment about how I hope that this is a learning lesson for a lot of the youth to, you know, read more into their government to better understand it. A lot of people, you know, like to put the blame on the president you mentioned because they feel like that he's the one that makes all decisions. Yeah, every time a law comes or people uh, disagree on law, I go to social media and see people saying, ah, Biden sucks, he did this, Trump sucks, he did this, Obama sucks, he did this. And I'm just like, do people like, I think that how the government works or even how it's structured to work needs to be brought to a forefront more and more people need to be educated because just because a law is a law or a law is being overturned or a law isn't a law yet doesn't mean that the president was like, ah, oh, man, I don't care about this law. Or, ah, oh, man, I'm going to overturn this law. The president doesn't have that type of power or leeway. There are other branches of the government that must go through with the law before they can even touch the law in most cases. And even if they don't agree with the law, the other branches of the government can still pass or overturn the law. And people don't know that. People don't know that, like, there is, like, a process to get laws and different bills and things signed. You'd be surprised how many people don't know what certain laws are. And then you have to think about the fact that there is a Congress and a Senate. Like, people don't know the difference between House of Representatives and things like that. And all those people aren't people of the president. I guarantee you all those people did not vote for the president because a lot of them, a lot of times a president can go into office with a lot of the Congress or the Senate not being the same party that they are. So think of it, think, um, like, I know now Biden's in office. Um, Congress is still mostly red. Biden is obviously a Democrat. So not saying that they're just not allowing him to do anything because he still is the president of the United States. But Congress is made up of way more people than the president, (laughs) obviously. And I'm pretty sure those people have have an agenda to push as does the president and this law in particular because i was already seeing people firing off on biden and um the vice president and i'm just like this was literally voted on by the supreme court biden didn't hand them this and say hey i think you should overturn this the vice president didn't hand them this and say hey i think you guys should review this like the supreme court reviewed this and overturned it and that's not to say that the president can't do anything about it yeah, because he... Uh, he definitely yeah. can. It's just he can only do so much. Like, the House of Representatives in Congress, that's 400, almost 500 people. And it's not just about, you know, all of that, too. There are so many other things that, not just the president, but you, people, too, the people listening to us right now, there's so much you can do right now to stop this. You know, a lot of people go... A lot of the people now are going into protesting. They're... They're they're taking they're not necessarily trying to combat the law, but they're trying to make a difference the best way they know how socially you know because this isn't just like 
impacting us politically. It's a social change as well. And even to go further, when I was mentioning educating, because me becoming, obviously I graduated high school last year and I just um, finished my freshman year of college, getting ready to go into my sophomore year of college. Because I didn't learn these things until I was about an adult. There are so many opportunities to vote on so many things. And when you're younger, you only think, oh, well, people get to vote for the president. But you don't really think about what else you get to vote for. And I think that that can't be educated enough because a, a lot of people, when these elections, like small, like even county or statewide elections, when they come around, a lot of people just don't vote because they literally don't know what it is. And, and, you know, it brings me back to what Joe Biden was saying one time in a speech after, after Roe v. Wade overturned. He mentioned how important this upcoming fall was because there was, there's not just the election here going on, too, right? There's, like, that's where all the state elections are happening. Yeah, all the state elections. So, are like, that's happening. why it's so important that, you know, the people that can go out to vote, and this is a solution that y'all can write down with y'all, Y'all, the people that are able to vote or the people that don't aren't registered yet, go out there, register to vote, and make sure that you, pack, that you cast your ballot for the person that you, if you want to see change, if you want to go back to, you know, having this, equal, this human right in your hands, go back, go, go um, excuse me, go this fall to vote for the people like Stacey Abrams, who... I'm confident wants to see this ha- see this uh, see this uh, Roe v. Wade go back to the way it was. You know, it's so important to you know go out there and join your friends in the protest in the protests and and uh, to uh, it's just so important right now to go out there and take matters into your own hands this fall. And when you're looking to vote, that's things like voting people. At, your, at the district level, maybe a school district level, um, Senate, obviously, senators, you get to vote for that, too, at some point. So, I, But a lot of people just don't know that, because I know I didn't know for a long time, and then um, my grandmother started showing me all the ballots she was getting. I was like, Grandma, who are all these people? <laughs> like, what are, they, what are they supposed to be doing? And it's, it's just a lot. I still don't really know what all... I am able to vote for, which I've been looking into it more and more since I now have the power to vote. Right. Like, some people don't know what electric, elected officials are or, like, certain things, like what elected officials are for, who they're for. Like, you'd be surprised. Like, like you said, I didn't know half of that. Like, you're still learning. I still got a lot more learning to do. Like, but I can definitely say working here and being here definitely helps me learn a lot more about what I didn't know about voting, like district commissioner and county commissioner. Like I'm like I learned things like that. I've definitely learned things like that from that. And some other solutions that y'all need that we should be putting in the pra- that uh, the people should be putting in the practice. You know, now that this is you know become a reality, it's a lot more important now to you know practice safer sex. And to um, be a lot more smarter about your decisions. Like, if you want to have a baby so bad, don't 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 start so early. You know, wait until you're 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 rooted in a in a in a neat family structure, and your you know the confidence is there, making sure that you know that you're ready to have a baby and start a family. And you know, and for the the, the financial troubles that'll be coming along, you know. This is the time to be a lot more financially literate. You know, start planning ahead more. Um, making sure that uh, if you're going to go out to, uh, I don't know, maybe New York. Is New York the state that allows? I think so. Yeah. I think it's New York and California. If you're, if you're in Georgia and you're going out to New York, make sure that you have the money, that you have the time, or... If you uh if, if you have if you know anybody that has the money or has the time to do that for you, I mean it doesn't necessarily have to come out of your pocket, you know. This is the time to come together, to 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 bring in some of your friends to help you out. So um, yeah. thank you, uh, Josh, for coming back onto the show with us at, on Education Matters. We appreciated you. Yes, sir. Especially me. 
and thank you for listening to Education Matters, the official voice of youth. Education Matters is sponsored by the Clark County School District and NewRadioAthens.com. If you missed any portion of this program or would like to hear it again, it can be heard Monday at 5.30 or Thursday at 10 a.m. on NewRadioAthens.com. You can also listen on demand at you, on your YouTube channel, on our YouTube channel, Education Matters Network. Education Matters is a production of the High School Completion Initiative. And we'll see you guys next time.